there back to day one and he found my dad's name in it for 101 hours. He flew this. Mechanic were in a flat spin with this. Second airplane he was ever in a flat spin. They, they got out, they both had chutes on. They didn't have to jump, but. Hey guys, what's up? So today we're gonna stop by the shop of Clyde Smith. He's working on serial number one. I have personally never met Clyde. And let's get to it. Clyde Smith, aka the Cub Doctor, which you may know him by, and uh, he is going to tell us a little bit about the Clipper, the PA-16, and this is serial number one. Hmm. You know, what's unique about the Clipper? The Clipper was the first short-wing four-place airplane that Clipper built. Yeah. It came from a Vagabond just after. This airplane was built a month after the first Vagabond came out, okay. which happened to be a whole year before the Clippers went into production. So this was flying around a whole year doing flight test work and all that before anybody knew about it. Oh, wow. Okay. And actually it was yeah, January, the end of January of 1949 is when they went into production. This was built January of 48. Okay. Just when the first Vagabond came out. In fact, this was built before the PA-17 Vagabond trainer. That's why it's 16. It's in between the two. Okay. So the the PA-15 was only a single-place airplane, single control. Single. But instructors couldn't train in it because uh, they didn't have the throttle and they didn't have rudder pedals and a stick. Yeah, okay. So they finally uh, got Piper to convert to dual control and switched to a Continental engine instead of the Lycoming and made the PA-17 trainer, oh. Vagabond trainer. Okay. So this was a clipper, and like the Vagabond, the wings were clipped PA-11 wings. The fuel tank in the wing was a PA-11 fuel tank. The engine in the clipper was a PA-12 engine. The tail services were basically J3, PA-12 tail services. The list struts were new the new teardrop shape. Yeah, the more streamlined. The more streamlined. Yeah. Ones. So anyway, these were built for 11 months. It built, I think, 736 clippers in 11 months in 1949. Yeah. And, yeah. and then something happened. What killed the clipper was Juan Tripp, who owned Pan American World Airways, and he won, he told Piper they better stop using the name clipper because that was his big <laughs> flying boats. That's just, so. I, I just find that comical, you know? I no, mean, an yeah, airliner a, to yeah. a little four plate. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah. So they did stop, but two events happened right about the same time. Piper bought Stinson from Consolidated out in California. Okay. And they, uh, Stinson was in Wayne, Michigan. So they, uh, the Clipper changed to the Pacer in November of 49 using Stinson control yokes and wheels and a lot of other okay. small type stuff. Interesting. So the, I didn't know that. Yep. Okay. The clipper was stick, which everybody likes that. It was yeah. the, the last yep. basically stick yep. controlled new design. And full span aileron, not just full no span flaps. It's but a J three aileron basically and it's yeah. a nine foot aileron. It, yeah. It's you pretty, shorten the wing six feet and yeah. then well not six feet, feet three feet. Yeah, three feet and you pull the aileron in. It, it's yeah. <laughs> very effective. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's good for what I've heard, you know, crosswind it definitely really helps right. crosswind. So okay. So how did you come across the serial number one, I guess? It, it came, I worked in customer service at Piper. 84 is when they closed the doors here. It must have been about 82, 83. The fellow that bought it lived out at Crest Air Park in Kent, Washington, just a suburb of Seattle. Okay. He bought the airplane. It was up in Alaska, Petersburg, Alaska, and he ferried it back down to his area. And he was going through all the log books, which still have all the log books they're back to day one and he found my dad's name in it for 101 hours he flew this thing oh really okay so he called piper in lock haven here and my dad had retired in 1975 but the operators knew clyde smith so they connected him to me and okay. i answered the phone yeah and he kind of chuckled he said oh by the sound of your voice you're you're not the clyde smith that i that i thought and i kind of said oh what well, <laughs> what's this here and he, he said uh does 4,000 hotel mean anything to you? And I said, it sure does. I said, that's the first clipper. And he just cracked up laughing. And he said, okay. Yeah. But we were in the same book from then on. Oh, okay. And, uh, so he was going to restore the airplane. He had a Cessna 170 and he bought this. He was going to restore it. I went out a couple times on company business to the Vancouver, Washington, which was a Piper distributor. And I met him and I actually got to fly in the airplane. It was single control like a Vagabond. It was basically yeah. a PA-15. So 
mm -hmm. he, he trusted me flying it, and then of course he, he knew I had a Vagabond yeah. back in 1969. So anyway, we got along good, and I told him one time, I said, Roy, if you ever decide to sell this, could I have first choice? And he said, absolutely. It was several years later, quite a few years later, he called me up one day, said, Clyde, this is Roy, he said, uh, you still interested in the Clipper? I said, absolutely. <laughs> He said, well, I'm going to sell it. He said, I won't get to it. He said, I've got too much to do, the property there and stuff. So yeah. I talked to my dad, and he and I went half and half, and we bought it for $4,000. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Nineteen fifty is when they put the double. Okay. And that really strengthened this so it doesn't curl up. This is because... This is touching. I've got to fold this back like this. Oh, okay. I've got to make a tool. Full span aileron. That's uh, okay. that's nice. It works great. <laughs> So you've done some repairs to it oh, so far? Extensive. Mm -hmm. I cut a pie-shaped section at each end, stuck a light up in there and looked through it and it's perfect in through the side. There's a sleeve in there and a sleeve in here. Okay, I've got to put new fittings on the front here. These stick down too far. They should be up, up here. Oh really? It looked weird. The gear looked weird and I wondered what was wrong. Huh. I could see this should be right up at the bottom of this tube. This flat right here. I have the new fittings. Yeah. Really? Okay. I have new fittings, so I didn't, these get cut off, and I'll stick a piece of all thread through through mm -hmm. here Line and put up. new fitting. This is that's a PA15. The string I have on there simulating the cable. Right? Okay. This would be the rotor cable. Yeah. Uh, the front seat was kind of rough. Mm hmm So I'm going to try to find. A bench seat for an early, early pacer or or another clipper, and and rework it to make it look like this originally was. Okay. It's pretty pretty close. The seat back, all that stuff's okay. It's just the the bench, the bottom part. Rear seat was sling type. That's okay. I made a whole brand new door. Uh, I even put the. The serial number on 16 1. Oh, yeah. It's, there's numbers on both doors that match the frame on all the airplanes. A lot of people don't know that, but the doors really? were made to the frame. Okay. Okay. I replaced all all this stuff. It was bad, bad. Yeah. All this was rotted out inside over there. Mm -hmm. So I did that first after I did some of the bottom work. It's brand new. Okay. Right here. Nice. And I built it to the frame. Yep. I just have this on here to yeah. hold it shut. This yeah. I made, this is a, a J3 window thing, like they did, they cut it here and cut about maybe two inches out of it and put and it just, closer together. Yeah. All this, this is Univere. This stuff is all Univere. This, this is Univere. All this, the whole birdcage. Yep. I redid totally from scratch. It okay. was not good. And yeah. I TIG brazed a lot of this stuff. I learned how to TIG braze and I love it. Boy, it yeah. doesn't warp stuff. Uh -huh. I put put new uh, trim crank brackets in. Okay. All that. They were... The it's getting pretty close, really. So, yeah, it, yeah. it is. Yeah. I'm going to re redo this. That That's different than the production ones. Oh, okay. This airplane was a prototype. They didn't even know they were going to build them when they built this airplane. They, it's a trial. You know? Okay. They, they didn't... The inside was covered with fabric, just square, no, no headliner. It okay. was just like a military yeah, airplane, just, just, yep. just covered. Didn't have a starter, didn't have a generator. You had to hand prop it. Had dual exhaust, no muffler. Really? Just had, get it going. <laughs> kind of had somewhat of a cabin heat system. Mm -hmm. But back here, I modified this. This this had never been brought to conformity. I put pulleys in here. They had fair leads in there, and you're only supposed to have like three degree deflection of the cable. Uh huh. 
For a fair lead. For a fair lead. Yeah. And they just had, well, for what this was. See, this was single control. Your rudder cables come back. You have rudder pedals on the left and right side. So your yes. rudder cables come back okay. along here. I need to pull it. See, everything is sucked yeah. over along the side over there. Okay, because this was the 15 your, yep, setup. Yep, yep, yep. Your elevator cables come back underneath the center. Correct. So, yeah, this that was different about this. And another thing which is different, I, I'm surprised they, right here, this of course, it doesn't have the jig hanger bracket tube. Across. So that's to hang Everyone them up in the jig. Everyone has that. Yep, that's jig. to hang it on the fixture. But this, they never put that in there. Okay. This surprised me. This was an adjustable elevator stop. Okay. And my dad and his mechanic were in a flat spin with this. Second airplane he was ever in a flat spin. They, they got out, they both had chutes on, they didn't have to jump, but... Wow. They adjusted the mm. elevator travel. It's hard to get a short wing piper to, to spin anyway. Mm -hmm. they, did, they did this. They did, wow. So this, this was adjustable and they tightened the nut, so I never touched that and I'm not going to. But yeah, so the, they got it to where they, they got wanted it. To it. Where, yep, yeah. yep, they found out what the limit was. Wow. So your dad had a hundred, over a hundred hours. 101 hours. 101 yep. hours, yep. wow. Yep, all kinds of stuff. Heating, cooling, VD, which is velocity, maximum over red line, one, one and a half times red line speed. Yeah. All kinds of stuff. Wow. Well, that's pretty awesome you ended up with it. Yeah, that's you guys right. Got <laughs> yep, yep. He was yeah. the first to fly it, and that's, uh, yep. Wow. And now I have it, so. Engine, the bottom end is done. Okay. But I didn't put the cylinders on because I don't want them rusted. Exactly. They're up in, up in the bedroom at yep. home, so they're in dry, up in the attic in my shop. Okay. There. So the engine could be finished, build up, but there's just so many little little things. Yeah, People I always hear like 90, 95% done, but 90% to go. Yeah, 90% to go. <laughs> yep, I was just thinking the same thing. So yeah. that, that's the status of it, okay. you know, all new channeling here. I'm going to re-sandblast, so I'll take the doors off. I'm going to re-sandblast this and re-epoxy, paint it, and paint it white, gloss white ranthane. Okay. I, that's my trademark. It looks okay. like a kitchen appliance. Yeah. So be the only clipper with one control. Yep. And it's original. Been on there forever. Yeah, wow. Usually they rot out down here because water gets in, lays down in there. I put drain holes, but this is all, this is all replaced. All this is new. There's the leveling point right there. All right there. See that? Okay. But I've got to recreate the hole up here. I've got to level it, hold the, the uh, plumb bob like this, you know, until it's over that, and then mark that and drill a hole through there, because that, that's how you level it, but laterally and longitudinally. Okay. All the short wing pipers have that. Interesting, I didn't know that. Yep. It's good information.